Hey guys, welcome to Travel Feels. Today we're going to talk about five tips for getting crispy audio. We all know how important audio is, but if you're like me, then sometimes you end up neglecting audio a little bit just because you're so consumed with the visuals and I just like the visuals way more. I'm not an audio guy, but audio is super important. I've been getting a lot of questions about my audio setups, what microphones I'm using. So I thought I would show my setup, but also give you guys some tips on getting better audio for your videos. Now to preface this, I am not an audio guy, but I have learned some things about audio over the years that I've been doing filmmaking. So these aren't really high level tips, but they're so crucial for getting really good audio. And audio is kind of one of those mysterious things for a lot of us where we don't really know what we're doing. We kind of just put it together and hope it's good. And I'm gonna try to keep this video nice and short, nice and to the point. Tip number one is to use a microphone. Huge tip, I know but it's actually so important to just use a microphone because the built-in microphones on any of the cameras are just not that good. For example, right now I'm playing the audio from the built-in microphone on the camera, and now I'm playing it from the shotgun up here. So for my videos, I like to use shotgun mics for the most part, but then sometimes I'm also using lav mics. Shotguns are always gonna be the best quality and the best range of sound. It, it just captures so much more sound than the lav mics, but sometimes you just need to use a lav mic. Sometimes it just makes more sense and they're better at isolating sounds than shotgun mics. Shotguns just pick up a lot more noise. For the studio stuff that I film, I'm using this guy, the Rode NTG3, it's up here. It's kind of expensive, but it's a super high quality microphone. And the nice thing about microphones is that once you buy one really high quality microphone, you can pretty much use that for the rest of your filmmaking career. Microphones don't really change that much. For run and gun stuff, I'm using this guy, the Rode VideoMic Pro, super good, super handy, fairly small, small enough. And it's just a really good microphone for vlogging and this kind of filming where you're just running around and you need some ambient sounds. So that's my vlogging microphone. And then if I need to use labs or I wanna double up on audio, get a shotgun and a lab just in case, then I'm using these guys, the Sennheiser, I don't even, e, EW100 G3s. That's what I'm using for labs. Now there's a bunch of different options for labs, but I bought these a super long time ago and they just still work perfectly. So those are the microphones that I'm using and you don't need to be using those exact same microphones, but you do want to use a microphone. Number two, I would say use a shotgun for sit down situations like this, and then use a lav for kind of roaming shots where you're running around and you don't wanna be always so close to the camera. For vlogging, I'm still usually using the Rode VideoMic Pro and not a lav, and that's because I wanna capture some ambient sounds also at the same time with the shotgun mic, whereas with a lav mic, you can't really be recording ambient sounds and all that kind of stuff. And also, if I'm with somebody else, I can quickly just turn around and point it at them, and I don't have to switch lav mics onto them in order to get audio from them. So I find for vlogging, it's still way more useful to use a shotgun mic. But let's say you're filming a video just by yourself and you don't wanna be always close to the camera. You're gonna be running around, showing examples, whatever. Then a lav mic is perfect for those situations. And the reason for that is tip number three, if you're using a shotgun, keep it as close to you as possible. For example, right now, I have the shotgun mic just out of frame right here. You guys can barely see it, just out of frame, right there. You wanna keep the shotgun mic as close as possible because this is where you get the best results. For example, if I'm this close, it sounds pretty dang good. But for example, if I'm even right over here, it doesn't sound as good as when I'm right under the mic, really close to the mic. So when you're using shotgun mics, no matter what shotgun mic you're using, try and keep it as close as possible. You're gonna get way better quality audio. And that's probably one of the biggest pro tips that I've learned watching the actual professionals, the audio guys do audio. They get nice and close. Number four is to aim your audio recording levels at minus 12 dB. Just like in video, you don't wanna overexpose your video or underexpose your video. The same way in audio, you don't wanna overexpose or underexpose your audio. It's, that's not what it's called, but you get what I'm saying. So for example, you don't ever wanna go above minus six dB. That's like overexposing video. That's the same thing in audio. You're gonna get really bad sounding audio. 
And then also at the same time, you don't wanna go too low on the audio levels. You don't wanna underexpose. So if you're way down at like minus 30 dB, then it's not gonna sound very good when you turn it up in post. You're gonna get a lot of noise and the audio is just not gonna sound as good. So make sure your audio is staying around minus 12 dB. This is a really important thing. And this is one of those things where I had no idea. I didn't know where the level should be at all. But now you guys know and you guys should stick to around that level. That's where you're gonna get the best results for your audio. Number five is to just monitor your audio. That's one of the big things that most people just don't do. First of all, you should definitely be looking at the levels, but even more importantly, you should actually listen to it. Stick in your headphones and listen, see if it's good quality. Especially if you're doing a higher quality production, like you're doing some interviews with people, you're doing corporate jobs or weddings or whatever, listen to it and make sure there's no weird sounds going on because the audio levels might look good, but then when you listen to it, you might be getting all these crazy different sounds which sounds terrible but it's still staying within the right levels if you're not listening to your audio it's kind of like you're filming without an LCD screen you need to see what you're gonna film you also need to hear what you're recording now for me I have the luxury of plugging in this NTG3 mic straight into the camera using XLR inputs but most DSLRs and smaller cameras don't have XLR inputs so what you're gonna need to do is use something like the Rode video mic or if you want to step it up and get a higher quality shotgun mic then you can use something like this the Zoom H4n this is just one kind of audio recorder and it works super well you can plug in your XLR so you can use really high quality shotgun mics and you can also record a few different channels so you can get a lav and a shotgun mic at the same time which you can't do in DSLRs and it's super handy sometimes to just have that backup but also what this allows you to do is monitor your audio sometimes you can't actually monitor your audio so let's say you plug in your shotgun mic or your lav mic into this then you could have this right by your side and you can just plug in your headphones and monitor the audio even though the camera is farther away which is actually super handy in certain situations but if you are using something like this recorder then make sure you do a sync clap what you're gonna do is hit record on your camera hit record on this thing and then you're just gonna give a good old clap and what this gives you is a nice audio spike that then you can use to sync your audio between your camera and the recorder. Now there's other ways of syncing sound, but it's really good to have this just in case all those other things don't work. So audio recorders, pro tip, you can still listen to the audio even if you're not able to do it on your camera or for whatever reason you can't because it's so far away or whatever. Audio recorders, really handy, I'll link it down below. And a last little bonus tip is to use something like a dead cat when you're shooting outside this basically just cuts out all that wind noise which is really distracting if you're hearing it all the time um, these are really handy they are a little bit expensive I've heard that you can even use a sock if you don't want to buy one and just as a warning don't put these things through the wash because this is what happens Ew, it's all like dreaded it should look like this nice and fluffy and not like this so don't wash it it doesn't help all right, so those are the audio setups that I use for my videos, and I hope these tips will get you that really nice, crispy sounding audio, because audio is so important. It should be one of those things that just goes unnoticed because it just sounds natural and good and it's not distracting in any way. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something. Guys, enjoy the filmmaking process and go get some of those travel feels.